So, um, Office US, Office US, mm -hmm. is uh, a project that tries to address the idea of architectural practice in a global scale today in order to uh, investigate and, and reflect about how we should be practicing. Um, Office US has constructed a repository of 100 years of architectural practices that have been building globally. And the space of focus is, is the US, US firms that have been building abroad. And that has allowed uh, Office US to really produce enough of a uh, archive to really know how for 100 years architecture has been produced globally. Uh, from the for like political forces, mm -hmm. social forces and, and drivers, economic factors. So all these different elements are the ones that are going to drive the research of the 25 weeks that Office US is going to be working here in Venice together with 90 outposts around the world. So uh, this global office is going to address some concerns and issues, 25 of them, that have emerged out of this repository, uh, but also resonate with questions of today, from questions of labor to uh, obviously a paid uh, a, or unpaid labor, um, to questions of gender or invisibilities, to questions of export and import and circulation of ideas, but also about how, as architects, do we address some of the important questions of our time in terms of publicness or in terms of politics? Well, let's talk about this export-import first because I think this is where your question is going in a way. Uh, it, at the beginning of our of our hundred year uh, archaeology that you, that is behind you right now, uh, uh, basically the American or the U.S. offices are are generally trained in Beaux Arts schools or in the, in Paris for the most part and they arrive to the U.S. Uh, as uh, architects who are going to produce a series of buildings, both uh, internally important uh, projects for the U.S., but also then they start to export. The thing about, uh, I wouldn't say that we found something vastly different from our initial idea of looking at the last uh, 10 years or the last decade to this, but what this has produced now is a, is a real archaeology of the globalized architectural office. And the important thing about looking at the office and the projects is that, uh, in in part, we are saying that one of the important, one of the most important things that the U.S. has offered the world, for better or for worse, is the professionalization of architectural pra practice. So when they went to another country, uh, not only did they produce a, an architectural object in that country, which is significant in various ways, but they also uh, brought their professional organized, efficient architectural practice there, which produced a, a series of other kinds of effects. Mm -hmm. And I think in that way, we're as interested in, or what we've uncovered is as much absorbing modernity as it is the participation in the proliferation of that condition. And when we started this project, we really were trying to understand a temporal framework mm -hmm. that would allow us to uh, provide enough of a comprehensive uh, understanding of the questions that we wanted to address. And yet when uh, the Biennale uh, came with uh, the hundred years that we are dealing with, uh, we felt extremely comfortable in expanding that frame because a lot of other questions then actually appeared. Um, and while this is obviously a, a project that in itself is closed, it's closed in order to itself to open to critique and investigation of the content in itself, but also of the, of the frameworks in which it has set. We could continue this wall uh, all the way uh, to the yeah, beginning yeah, and to the end. Yeah, and, yeah well, and, and, and to be honest, the, the shorter time frame, it, that was a very, I mean, was random. Maybe, yeah. yeah, it was, it was a that random, was. And, and it was actually okay. something that I don't know, we only had that for maybe a month. I was the idea was to look at the contemporary. Extended. But the, the thing I think that's interesting about this timeline is that obviously modernity begins before 1914. This is a very arbitrary point. What isn't arbitrary here is that we arrived to today. And in that sense, what, what the timeline, uh, Kuhas's Kuhas timeline gives us is it ensures that the last two decades are seen as history which I think is a particularly specific to the way in which he's viewing the world and, and in which we're uh, viewing the world with him. What the expand, I think the expanded date really gave us was a quantity that produces a quality that we didn't, we wouldn't have necessarily had with the 10 years.
muito fogo aí. 